grassroots revival, man, we have a lot of, I would say, hopes and dreams for the future of this church. A church that has only been around since 2020. Uh, started at a time where most people were like, don't start a church. <laughs> you can't even meet. We had some meetings, okay? But here we are almost four years later, and it's pretty, pretty incredible to see what God has done. And next year, there's a lot of stuff that we would hope to do, but we're not going to be able to do it without money or extreme favor. So there is extreme favor, too, because sometimes people are like, hey, you want a building? Why don't you just use this building? But it's going to take all of us to, to really get to a place where we are sustaining and uh, thriving as a church. It takes, it, it takes a family doing family, church family together to, to not just come and, you know, be blessed by a good message and a good word, which is good, but to also participate in the forward movement of the church. One of the things we really want to do next year is we want to get our own building. Um, we want to get a, have a place where we can do classes uh, during the week, a place where people can come and connect during the week, a place where we can uh, maybe even, you know, have a daycare or something and help take care of kids so, so parents can go to work and know that their kids are in a safe place with, with people who aren't teaching them crazy things. Right? I mean, this, that strangely enough, that is a worry that you have to consider now. Um, we want to do missions. We want to send more people to Moldova. We want to, you know, explore what it looks like to, to have a, a long-term presence in a, a foreign country. That's pretty amazing. Um, we've been in talks about starting a school of ministry. We want to do a school of ministry, a grassroots school of ministry, and, and, and have a place for people to come and learn how to do ministry and be taught by people that, that have done it, that have experience. Um, we, I mean, we want that real bad because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, really passionate about building leaders up from within. You know, I, I don't think there's a person in the room that, that can't do what I'm doing and maybe even do it better, right? Because I'm, you know, I say a lot of things that we might have to cut out of the video later. <laughs> you, you might not have that problem. <laughs> we want to start small groups. You know, we want to get, you know, some little home church action happening and, and continue to, to, to build a community. We want to do special events for Revival House. You know, we, we got guys that are on fire for the Lord and, and uh, you know, choosing a life of discipleship. And we want to be able to send these guys to conferences and, you know, and, and, and continue to pour into their lives while they're with us. We want to do more church-wide events, you know, barbecues, get-togethers, you know, all this stuff. But we're not going to be able to, to get there, you know, as sad as it is, without some money. <laughs> and I'm not asking anybody in here to fund it all. So don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's on you to fund it all because here's what I know. The Lord will provide. So I'm not, I'm not sharing any of this from a place of fear or anxiety. I'm not, you know, even coming like, if, if you don't help, we're not going to be able to do any of that. I don't believe that at all. I've seen too many times the Lord show up and do stuff that seemed impossible to ever think that he can. But I am asking you to, to sow into the house that, that loves you so much. Because I'll tell you what, we, all the leaders here at Grassroots, and I think you know this, if, if you hang around for more than a couple weeks, you're going to get like 30 hugs, you know, in, in, in about five minutes. And, you know, I hope you're, you're cool with that. But we really love each other, and we really are praying for each other, and we really do want to bless um, each other's lives. And so that's really more of, of my heart, is that, that we all lock arms together and we all participate as a church family together. And like I said, I give, you give, we, we all give. <laughs> so nobody's, nobody's asking for, for a, a, just a handout. We're all participating together. 
But the last thing I would say as you give, the, the, the Lord says he loves a cheerful giver. So don't give today or next week because, you know, you, you feel bad for not giving. Give because you're excited to sow into the kingdom of God. That you're excited to see what the Lord will do in and through this local church. Because we got plans and we're going places. We got, you know, our eyes set on giants that we want to slay. You know, we're, a, you know, we might be a small church, but we're a giant slaying church, right, Ethan? Amen. Man, there's, I, I felt like the Lord, I was reading one time, uh, Solomon, you know, the Lord asked him, he said, what do you want? And Solomon asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for money and all that stuff. And um, and so the Lord's like, well, I'm actually going to, because you asked for something good, I'm going to give you all that stuff anyway. So he actually got it all anyway. But I thought to myself, I'm like, what would, what would I ask for? And, and I, I was talking to the Lord. And I'm like, you know what? I just want the head of the giant. That's it. You know, I look out in our, our, our world today and I see people afraid. I see people divided. I see, you know, all the weird stuff. And it's like, man, if I could just take the head off whatever that is, that I'd, I'd be all right. I'd be like Thanos sitting back and like, not Thanos, that's a bad example because Thanos was a bad guy. Imagine a really good version of that that didn't kill half the universe. <laughs> that was the wrong one? All right, let's pray. Father God, we just, uh, Lord, we thank you that you are our provider. God, we thank you that you uh, never let us down, God. Lord, we, we choose this morning to step into the opportunity that is right here in front of us to live unafraid. God, to trust you with all of our heart, to not lean on our own understanding anymore to read your word, to open up your word and read your promises and say yes and amen. Those are for me. To know that they are for me. That I'm included. (laughs) I've not been overlooked. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Lord, you, you planned me before I even got here. There's not a person in this room that is overlooked by God. Lord, I choose to believe that you have a portion set aside for each one of us that nobody can touch, nobody can steal, nobody can corrupt. Father, I just say thank you. And I ask God that you continue to give me and everybody in this room the courage to get up every day and choose to trust you over everything else that we could choose. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen.